All right, you guys, so let's hop right into today's show, show you guys, because since, you know, school is starting back up now, um, I'm going to be giving you guys, and especially to the new teachers out there, and also veteran teachers, you can use this as well, but I'm going to be giving out some eight ways, you guys, for proactive classroom management tips. Now, I know I discussed this back on uh, Future Educators Talk, but I never quite, you know, gave you guys like some tips of, you know, what you should use or, you know, whatever into your own classroom. So I'm going to do that today. So let's start off with this first, that new teachers, especially you guys, um, and also experienced ones with veteran teachers, um, you can find ways, some ideas on how to stop, you know, disruptive behavior before it even begins. So, number one, make sure you guys, you know, you have, you know, your notebook and pencils um, to jot these down. And I will, you know, some some of the ways, some of the tips I will I will be giving you guys if I can speak on today. Um, I will be using that, using some of them into my own classroom as well. So, number one is you has, and I really like this too, and all teachers should do this in some kind of a way that works for them, is to greet your students at the door. Okay, so I found this out that in a school at Washington, D.C., a teacher who starts their day by giving each of her students a high five or a handshake, a hug, whatever, and this teacher says that during that time, I'm just trying to connect with them, um, and I absolutely agree with that so much because like I touch base, Andrew knows this, and like I touch base on future educators talking on here, you starting off first with, you know, building that bond with your students firsthand, you know, at the beginning of the school year, that's when you guys should really, you know, do this at the beginning of the school year, not trying to wait at the end of the school year or, you know, it, because that's like a waste of time. Like, what have you been doing all along? So um, you should, I like this here. I like this here. And I wish, you know, back in, you know, high school, you know, some teachers, you know, would do this, but, you know, they wouldn't because whatever. They just, you know, want us, you know, come in, you know, do, our, you know, sit down, you know, do what we're supposed to do. And then there we go where I had there. But um, what do you think of this, Andrew? Will you be doing this? Um, or have you, you know, since you're a substitute teacher now, have you been um, greeting um, students at the door when they come in? Or how are you um, with this here? Um, I have during the past. Um, I'm sorry, you're going to hear my graduate voice. I told y'all, I just woke up from now. Um, but I have... I uh, agree. I was doing it in the door, outside. Um, sometimes I do it inside, mm -hmm. um, like inside of my classroom as I'm setting up, like yeah. getting ready for the day. Because sometimes I'm not ready yet. Like there's wow. some there's some stuff to do uh, before I actually get started. Um, will I continue to be doing this? Uh, definitely. Uh, why wouldn't I? Um, but during my time as a substitute teacher, even now, um, yes, I've been doing that a lot, a lot of that. Right. And I like that there, too, you know, because that will give, you know, the students, probably like in my opinion, like, you know, a warm welcome inside, you know, into the classroom or if you're doing it um inside or even you know outside before they come in um so that so that will be that's a good tip right there for the new teachers who are entering into this upcoming school year um that would be great for you guys as well um so number two i have and like i touched base on this earlier is to establish maintain and restore relationships so building relationships with your students through strategies like we just said, greeting them at the door is a good start. And it also is very necessary to maintain them over the course of the school year, all year, all year long, you guys. Um, and get this here, I really like this here. And I want you guys to jot this down because I really do like it. 
the stronger the relationship and the better we understand our students, the more knowledge and goodwill we have to draw on when the going gets tough. I really like that. I really like that. So new teachers, please write that. And also, you know, with all educators who are watching our show, um, because I, I totally agree with that there. So number three is to use reminders and cues. So for older kids, for older students, you guys like high school students. Um, this is for example, for the high school teachers, give plenty of warning if you need them to follow instructions. And reminders are very helpful ways to encourage your students to, you know, follow instructions without, you know, you keep telling them over and over and over and over again. So another example I have is if you can, you know, anticipate a distraction or, I mean, disruption, such as students getting out of their seats, if they finish an assignment early, you know, give them a short reminder a short reminder of what they should do instead, okay? Instead of, you know, like I um, said there. So, okay, I quite see how that's going, okay. And then also reminders are commonly variable, you guys, but they can also be, you know, visual um, because, you know, you guys have some, of course, you know, visual students, you know, who likes to see things, you know, up close and not if you know write stuff on the board like they like to see things you know you know visually like you know so um I think yeah all teachers yeah use you know use whatever you know you don't have to do exactly what this is saying use you know what best works for you inside of your classroom because you run that classroom nobody else does that is your classroom and you can you know do whatever you need to okay that's like in my opinion because that's like your room you can you control everything that is happening in there your students that you have you know during the day whatever um so do what's best for you you, you don't have to you know agree to what i'm saying here but these are just like some tips to try to help out especially for the new teachers out there um so i'm gonna move on to number four you guys and then i believe we quite touched base on what i'm about to say here back on Future Educators Talk in season one, I believe, where we talk about um, classroom seating. Um, and I believe we said that we was going to use um, flexible seating into our classroom. So mm -hmm. yeah, so when students choose their own seats, get this you guys, when your students, they choose their own seats, there is more likely three times more likely to be disrupted than when the seats are assigned because after all you know they will probably pick seats you know next to their friends and spend more time chattering we know that we know that right. um right. so yeah so that doesn't mean it, it is always bad you guys it, that doesn't always mean the case but giving your students a sense of ownership in the room you know paired with clear expectations for behavior it can be surprisingly a positive effect. And also a welcoming space can reduce anxiety and also boost um, academic performance inside of your classroom. So I found this out, there's a teacher in Madison, Alabama, who gives her room a cozy feel by adding, you know, like couch or, you know, a rug, a coffee table, you know, posters, whatever the case is. And then her students, they decide where to sit. But here, but here's the case. If they can't get back to work done, if they can't, you know, do what they're supposed to need to do, then she does this here. She moves them back to the classroom or up front of seats, whichever, you know, the case is there. And I believe, I don't know, because I was quite thinking about this, over the course of this week that my first year of teaching, I was going to let, and I don't know, this probably will change once I start teaching, but I was going to let my students 
like, you know, the first day of school, because, you know, it's the first day, you know, there it, it's, you know, they're coming back from spring, from summer break, excuse me. And, you know, they, you know, they want to, you know, sit with their friends, you know, catch up with them because they haven't, you know, over the course, over the course of the summer, you know, to get to, you know, um, on that stage there. And I was thinking of that, um, you know, let them sit, whatever, on the first day, which is fine. Um, but then like on the second day, I was like going to probably assign them two seats. Um, but I'm thinking of this here, like, I don't know, I may let them sit probably all, well, probably like the first few months, let them sit whatever they choose to. But, you know, if they get, you know, if they're not doing their work, um, if they're not doing their work or, you know, if they're too busy, you know, chatting with each other, you know, with their friends and stuff, then I may, you know, reconsider that. But what, what's with you, Andrew? Do you, are you going to, you know, let your students sit anywhere they want to, you know, during the whole school year or the first, <laughs> the first weeks or like, how are you, you um, are thinking of this here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I can say whatever you want. Uh, no. <laughs> um, for probably for the first, I would say for the first nine weeks, they will be sitting at inside the seats because okay. um, to learn everybody's names. Correct. Correct. Uh, which we talked about in that previous episode, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, and then from there, I'm gonna let them decide um, for for the uh, kind of like the transition to the second nine weeks. I will let them decide if they want to continue to sit in their assigned seats or to sit whatever they want, aka mm -hmm. flexible seating, or um, what's the other one? It's if they want to continue sitting in their assigned seats, flexible seating, or they can sit wherever they want. So really, yeah. they got three choices. Um, but however, flexible seating and they can sit wherever they want is a privilege because it all depends on their behavior. Correct, exactly. Um, or I guess for that day. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know, probably now, I'm probably not going to let them um, choose on their first day of school because, yeah, like you said, yeah, I want to, yeah, absolutely, you know, get to know yeah. them, you know, like get to Where know their you? names. Um, I don't know exactly. who you are. So, Why are you over there? <laughs> Go back to your seat because I have no idea who your name is. Because yeah. the way I'm going to organize, because some, I'm going to go ahead and say this too, some okay. teachers has, they they put it in ABC order, which is good. And yes. that was what I was going to do, yeah. Um, because, yeah. But some teachers do it, um, like they start with A and work this way. And then, you know, and like that. For me, I like to start with the A's and then go down. Mm -hmm. So that B, um, or, you know. Yeah. Okay, like, yeah, my mind is, yeah. It's woken, but it's not fully. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Because I remember, yeah, some of my teachers former teachers, I don't know why I keep saying teachers, my former teachers, they used to do that with us, like putting us in, you know, um, because we was in rows and they would put us, you know, in alphabetical order because they would know, like, you know, if they go down the list, like, okay, who's here? Okay, you're here, you're here, you're here. They would do that because that makes it, you know, much easier for them because if they, you know, they put them wherever, like, okay, where's Damien at? Where's he at? Okay, he's back there. Where's Sally at? Okay, she's right here. It'd it, it be, you know, it takes so much time, you know, yeah. away from them. Um, mm -hmm. Too much so, time. 
Yeah. But yeah. The match had movement. Yeah. <laughs> it should be that one, one look. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. You're there. Cool. Not just, oh, you over there. Oh, yeah. you over there. Yeah. Oh, uh, you that, there. yeah. Oh. Ah, uh, uh, no. No. Hey, we water, please. Thank you. Yeah. Really yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you guys. So, I hope you wrote that down for number four. Let's move on to number five, which is, um, and you guys, because I've never seen this, you know, in, in my, you know, school years, and I don't know if you, Andrew, but teachers, I don't see this a lot. I really don't, but you guys need to, what I'm talking about here is to give behavior specific praise, okay? Ooh. Let me explain this here, okay, right. before you guys come at me here. So it may seem, you know, counterintuitive, but acknowledging some positive behavior and also, you know, ignoring the low level disruptions can be more effective than punishing or disciplining your students. Instead of focusing on, you know, specific students, you know, you know, like your favorites, like I mentioned before, but I'm not gonna touch base on that. Um, offer praise for the behavior you want to reinforce. So like, for example, you could tell your students, like if they, you know, if they, you know, completed all their assignments, you know, they did, you know, they did everything that you told them. You could say excellent work of getting to your, excellent, you could say excellent work of getting all your things correctly. Or, you know, you could say excellent work for getting to your seat quickly. Now, this can be, you know, for like elementary because middle and high school students, um, I don't think you, you don't, don't because they would be like, <laughs> I would be like, um, you, okay, you don't have to treat me. You don't have to say like, that like, like, I'm, like I'm a little kid, asking. I'm a teenager, um, I'm high schooler. What, what are you doing? <laughs> so, no, so I got yeah. that so you guys, um, please um, use that. And also, it also is helpful to avoid using the word don't, okay? Don't do that. Um, because don't do that. students are more likely to listen to instructions that include clear reasons. So don't use the word, you know, don't. That's what they say here. So don't use it, you know use you know I'm something still gonna that use it yeah i'm still gonna use it because that's part of my personality so don't don't make it happen okay yeah. don't mm -hmm. do this all right let's move on to number six which is of course is to set clear expectations for your classroom okay so <laughs> instead of just you know, displaying rules for behavior across your classroom or whatever, you know, you could have a discussion with your students about why those rules matter. So a seventh grade social studies teacher in um, Portland, Maine, he works with his students to create a list of rules, um, which are, you could use words such as, you know, focus, um, considerate, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And this helps to build a sense of a community. And he says that it helps us own the behavior in the classroom. And instead of a top-down list of rules that a teacher gives a class, 
these are words that we, you know, generate together, and these are words that we believe in. So set clear expectations for your classroom. Um, you know, do that with your students. You know, like it says, have a dis have have. If I could talk on today, have a discussion with your students um, about you know setting clear expectations for your classroom, like. You know, this is how I want it to be done, like this way, blah, 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 blah. You turn, you know, your assignments in, this, whatever, you know, the case of your classroom. Set it very clear so your students know exactly, you know, what they're supposed to do. Because a lot of, well, not a lot of you guys, but some of you guys don't, you know, set it very clear for your students to understand of, you know, what you know, of what they need to do inside your classroom because they're like all over the place and you have to keep on, you know, reminding them over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, which is very tiring for you guys. I know because you have to keep on repeating yourself over and over and over and over and over again. Um, so set it very clear, you know, during the beginning of the school year, then yes, of course, I know that, you know, some of your students, you know, they will forget from time to time, but you could always, you know, remind them um, so that's what I, you know, what about you, Andrew? Set clear expectations for your classroom. Um, I believe that's good at the beginning of the school year, don't you think? And not waiting, you know, you know, in the middle of the school year or, you know, at the very last minute at the end of the school year. I don't, I don't do that. Yeah. You know? I got time for that. Um, set... For each lesson. If you're teaching high school, mm -hmm. actually, let me back up. If you're teaching elementary or middle, I, because I found this out yesterday. Okay. And not yesterday. Uh, on July, because this episode is probably going to uh, come out sometime in August. So um, I found this out back in July 15 and July 16. So, I I want you I want you all it's up to you um to write down a learning topic or the I can statement um and then let um students read that at the beginning of the lesson so that at the end they will know how to do it um so for my math people if I were to teach sixth grade math, we learn about order of operations. The learning target will be I can solve and write an equations and how to solve order of operations correctly. So that when they are about to leave for my class, they will know how to write and solve order of operations correctly. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's bringing so back many memories because we used to do that. Uh, my eighth grade teacher, my eighth grade math teacher, uh, she she always make learning fun and she always, we always did this every time, you know, with a new lesson, she have her I can statement on the board and she will read it all first, you know, for, you know, how to do it. And then we will always chant back at her. So she would be like this, like, I can, then we say it, I can, then solve word problems, solve word problems, um, using equations, using equations. Then we, we do that three times and she always make it fun, you know, to do it. Then we already know, you know, how, you know, what we're supposed to do and also at the end of class you know she gave us exit tickets and stuff like that and that every teacher i'm not i don't know how you would do it you know in all your other classes but um especially in math you know have your you know, do something you know and make it fun because it, that's what students want they want you know make learnings fun especially in your math classes and also especially in all of your classes but you know really with math because, you know, some students you have, you know, who struggles with math and then you have others, you know, who are, you know, they're very good at it. So, you know, have, I like that there, you know, do, you know, write it out onto your board or, you know, have it on a sheet of paper for your students, whatever the case is, have your I can statement, read it out, you know, whatever best works for you. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Andrew. Yeah. All right. 
Number seven, you guys, we're almost done. Um, number seven is to actively supervise your students. So let me explain this here. And of course, you know, obviously with elementary students, of course. So present is very crucial, <clears throat> excuse me, to maintaining classroom management and to effectively deliver your instructions. And it is a skill we can all develop with effort. Now, although it's very tempting to sit at your desk and grade papers for teachers, um, that's also an invitation to your students to get distracted. Yes, of course, because when you go by at your desk, you're doing whatever, that is the time, you know, when students want to act up because you are not in front of the classroom teaching. You're back at your desk, in your new corner, writing papers, you know, looking at emails, whatever. And that's the perfect time, you know, for students, you know, to start talking, not doing their work. Trust me, I have experienced that. So, yeah. So, be active, you guys. Be active. Move around the room. Check in on your student progress and ask questions. It's not about um, policing your students, politicizing your students, but about interacting with them. Yes, because I have I have some of these former teachers, and I know I explained this before. I'm not trying to dish you guys all out, but some of you guys, you just <laughs> always like to, and I remember this from like my high school years and um, uh, middle school years. Some of you, some of you guys, teachers. You just like to, you know, you do give us the work. You do be teaching us, but you don't be, you know, walking around. You don't be interacting with your students. You don't, you don't go by desk to desk to check on if we're all working, you know, moving around the classroom because you're always sitting at your desk. And, and some days you will teach from your desk, which you're supposed to be in front, you know, for students to be present with you, looking at you in front of the classroom, but you but you be in the back of the classroom and your students, you know they're not gonna pay attention because they're hearing the voice from behind them or the side, whatever, um, in your classroom. And you know they're not gonna be listening to you. They're gonna be very distracted, talking to their friends, not doing their work. And that is a problem. That is not going to happen in my classroom because I'm going to be engaging with my students, moving around, checking on them, you know, checking are they doing their work, be in front of the classroom teaching. So um, mm -hmm. please supervise your, what do you have? Angie, you have something? No. I, I was about to say, um, you, you took the word out of my mouth. I don't need to explain. <laughs> I don't need to explain. Go ahead. All right, you guys. Now, I found a study on this that found that a teacher's nonverbal cues, such as smiling and making eye contacts, can reduce physical and or physical logic distance with their students and boosting students' positive feelings toward the teacher and the course material while improving behavior. So that's like a, you know, a note for all of you guys. And finally, number eight, told you guys we went by very quickly with this here. Number eight is to be consistent in applying your rules. A teacher at a public high school, she was asked to discipline a black student for violating the school dress code by wearing saggy jeans. And as they walked down the hallway, he pointed out other boys, which they were all white, who were also wearing saggy pants. Mm. And this is what happened. Their response. Are you going to get them away? Are you going to get him too? Or is he, or is it just me? Um, he asked. So school and classroom expectations, you know, rules and routines should be allowed and applied fairly to all students, to all students. I'm going to say it again to the back, to all students, because I, and I've seen this firsthand, like always, I've seen where, you know, one student, one student, you know, 
is not doing what they're supposed to because they're not supposed to wear, you know, this and that. But then you have other students with the same thing. And you're not going to get on them, but because since we're, you know, we're black and, you know, okay, that should not have an issue. Seriously, if I get the same punishment, they should get the same punishment as me as well, not the other way around. Because that makes totally no sense. Like, why do I get punished in this way? And then the others, they don't get punished. Or if they do, it's something that I, you know, it's something totally different. That is not fair. All to them. So, but so. I time for the today. <laughs> no, ma'am. If you see, get him to. Can he doing the exact same thing? Exactly. That makes no sense. So don't if single. If one apple can ruin the other batch, why he ain't getting it? Mm-hmm. What he waiting for? He waiting for mm-hmm. Christmas? He better come on. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. So don't single out certain students. It's the behavior you should be focused on, not the student. So correct errors when you see them and provide additional instructions or reteaching when misbehavior occurs. So yeah. So like I said, don't single out certain students. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because, no. No party. So <laughs> that is for all of you guys. Um, new teachers and veteran teachers out there. Um, some eight proactive classroom management tips for you guys this upcoming school year. So I can hope you use some of them, some of them into your own classroom and also share them out to your other um, colleagues as well. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that is all from me. like to share for the new teachers this upcoming school year that you that you will think um they should use inside their own classroom it's okay if you don't get everything done in one day oh my gosh i was just wow i was just if, hearing about it's this okay yesterday. if you don't get everything done in one day and this is coming from a substitute teacher okay <laughs> Mind you, I had a sub third grade for the past two days. <clears throat> Some of the stuff I was supposed to teach, I didn't get to mm-hmm. because of time. Mm-hmm. So I decided to postpone it to tomorrow, mm-hmm. which will set everything back. But don't forget. Don't forget. Mm-hmm. Everything's going to be okay. Exactly. Okay, you're behind. It's all right. It's okay. Don't fret about it. Okay, I'm pretty sure there. Are, I'm pretty sure veteran teachers have stuff that they want to teach about, but they can't because of time. Yeah, yeah. Some I'm- some classes are like almost forty to forty five minutes long, and trying to cram all that information in that time slot. Mm-hmm. Right no that's too much no 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 
that's why I wanted that. All right, so this is the start of the lesson. Tomorrow we're going to review and then Correctly. be back. Yep. Yeah. Yes, and just like with me, with I'm starting back the um, math session this upcoming school year, which is I'm going to be uploading to my YouTube channel. There are some lessons, you guys, that I don't get all of them in in just one day. I spread them out, you know, during the week, throughout, you know, Monday through Friday, because I'm not going to get all those stuff in that I would teach you all in one day. Okay. That is not all possible. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I if I that. don't get it all in that one day, that's fine. We will do it again tomorrow and the next day if we have to. Okay, so teachers, educators, please, you guys, just calm down. Just relax. Everything's going to be fine. You can do it again the next day. You don't have to all cram it all in into one day and expect your students to learn so much materials in that one day. No, 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 no. So, all right, because I was actually like watching when you said that I actually was watching on YouTube, a teacher was explaining that. Um, and I was like, that is so true there. That is so true. So thanks, Andrew, for that tip there. Um, and we are finished, you guys. We are so finished.